Brian, tell us about the Metropolis demo. Sure. Uh, by now, most people have probably watched some uh, video feeds of it. Um, but it's uh, the first level of the game that gets attacked by an Imperial army um, r- orchestrated by Emperor T- um, Percival Tachyon. And so it's really it's one of the signature levels of the game. We've seen it in two other games, and we've decided to destroy it. And so buildings are being toppled, bridges are coming down, lots of destruction happening all over the place. And in the demo, we give you the option to use some of our combat devices, which are these uh, overpowered weapons, um, where we really get to, by making them somewhat rare, we can make them more powerful. And this is something that we haven't really done in past games. So we have stuff like the Groovatron, where you can throw uh, it out and cause enemies to dance. And every enemy, every character in the game dances. And then we also have the... um, uh, Transmorpher, which will turn enemies into penguins. And so it's kind of fun to do a combination of Groovatron, Transmorpher, you get lots of penguins dancing. Uh, you get to fight these troopers who are controlled by these fish heads, and then you can smack, break them up, the fish heads pop out, and you can cause those guys to dance. So a lot of the uh, the press, um, people were just kind of laughing every time they saw these characters dance. They all dance in sync, so you put on this little, little stage show each time you throw this weapon out. Uh, and yeah, I just got a lot of great um, comments and feedbacks from people. They were just really blown away by just the amount of stuff that we could show on screen and really the beauty of the level. So uh, really happy with the reception and well, uh, people's uh, feedback. And the one thing I want to say, too, about the penguins is that's what you guys picked. So you yep. guys emailed us. You guys wanted penguins. You guys got penguins. So yep. Uh, come on, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty sweet for listening <laughs> to the full moon show. show. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's we're really uh, we're really excited to bring that. And I think you may have noticed if you've seen the screens in the video, like they all have different outfits. So they have a top hat and a monocle, or a little Captain Cork thing, or a mm-hmm. scarf, and there's snow. So that's really cool. Yep. Uh, I have a quick question, uh, Brian. Do you, is is the destruction of Metropolis symbolic of moving from? you know, PS2 to PS3, or is there anything deeper behind that when you were um, envisioning that that's how we would start the game, or is it just, you know, it gives you an opportunity to show lots of stuff happening at once, or both? It's yeah, it's a combination of stuff. I mean, one, we wanted to really create conflict up front and really start the whole game off with a bang and really start the question of why is Ratchet's home under attack, and then that kind of brings up, you know, questions for his past, um, you know, this villain from his past is attacking him. So that creates that question. And, yeah, we thought that if we're going to show this city again, something we've shown in previous games, we need to give it a twist. We need to give, give something new and create a new dynamic to it. So we put it in the context of having it getting destroyed. So uh, a- after Metropolis um, or parts of Metropolis get destroyed, Ratchet flees and goes off to the Polaris Galaxy. And that really marks kind of a new beginning for him and for Clank where they're on this quest to kind of figure out where he came from and, and what their future is all about. Mm-hmm. Now, some people, there's a few comments that, um, you know, and just to address some of the comments that came up were that, you know, it's a very action-intense level. Mm-hmm. And it feels um, it feels kind of up your arsenal-ish because it's pretty straightforward, action-intense. But I think one of the things we've talked about a lot on the podcast is how we're really aiming for a lot of variety. So that's just one example of a level. And so people that are thinking it's more just like it, the rest of the game is straight action may be a little surprised. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for one, um, we knew that a lot of people played the past Ratchet games. We didn't want to bog people down with a lot of help messages and training messages. We wanted to start the game off quickly. So we picked um, a lot of the aspects from past games that we felt were very intuitive that people could kind of pick up and play really quickly. And at the same time, um, we really just wanted it to be action-driven and really kind of you're flying by the seat of your pants, you know. And, and really just changing up the gameplay has been really cool. Having a lot of the different camera angles, it makes it feel very cinematic with the jump pads, the grind rail, the free-falling, um, the bridge destruction sequences. Now, one other comment I saw was something uh, people were asking about uh, locks, a uh, lock strafe control set. Uh-huh. And how that wasn't in the demo, but are we planning that for the final we are. game? We are. Yep, so, absolutely. Okay. And that's that's been coming up quite a bit. And that's something that we've we've really kind of rebuilt Ratchet from the ground up for the PlayStation Three, and to really take advantage of a lot of stuff. Our code base is completely different than where it was before. So that's something that we're now adding in um, as we speak. Yeah, I've heard. It. I think I've heard it is actually in now, yeah, and they're just tweet and they're in. tweaking yeah. it. So, yeah. yep. um, it's a lot of so for all of you that were worried, especially Jeremy Dunham at IGN, that Lockstrafe is gone, <laughs> it is in the game. So you know. Um, 
outside of that, like I, I mean, all the comments I heard were pretty much overwhelmingly positive. Mm-hmm. They, everyone said it played just like a Ratchet and Clank game, and that's great. So, um, you know, that's what it is. Well, and with some few, you know, with some new additions, you yeah, know, exactly. Uh, six axis cannot be taken for granted. The fact that the Groovatron, uh, I, I think that lost in the glamour of the Groovatron is the fact that you have, uh, you know, dozens of enemies dancing with their own animations uh, on screen in the middle, especially in Metropolis, in the middle of a meteor storm with hundreds of cars driving around, and uh, you can still do whatever you want with Ratchet, and you can still break a bunch of stuff and not drop frame. I mean, that's kind of a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think, I mean, the overall expressiveness, and then just like the weapons in general, everything, a lot of the stuff is are things we could have never done on PS2. I mean, from the tornado launcher to the amount of enemies on screen to... Um, you know, like you said, to just all the different animations and things like that and putting yep. all that on screen at the same time. So, um, And I think, you know, like I said, the one of our key hallmarks has always been variety in gameplay. And I think uh, as people get to experience the entire game, they will see a lot of that variety. Oh, come yeah, out. absolutely. So one other cool thing that people have been clamoring for is some sort of official trailer. Hopefully you've seen it by the time you've listened to this. If not, you will see it very soon. It's done. It should be out there. I'm not sure if it's on the PlayStation Store this week, but it will be on, I believe, IGN um, this week. So keep your eyes open for it. There will be a link to it on our uh, main page. So it's definitely worth checking out. And um, I I like the way it turned out. Yeah, yeah, it looks really good. I think uh, people will be happy. Hopefully we'll... uh be somewhat evocative of a uh, computer-animated movie. 